You know, the faith that we exercise is by and large uh, dependent on the teachings that we have received. If you've been a believer in Yeshua for a number of years, um, you have absorbed and you've taken in the word. And uh, again, I, I want to emphasize a little bit that we exercise the faith that we exercise is, is largely on the teaching that we have received or at the same time we have studied and learned. Yet I would say tonight that it, it is sad but true that if someone has received the wrong teaching or false teaching from the Holy Scriptures and they are now exercising faith on what they have learned that is false or wrong, I think it's a tragic waste of learning because they've learned the wrong, the wrong things, right? Yet we know that faith cometh by hearing. So they're hearing something and they're exercising faith on what they're hearing. This is why I think God says, I will give you shepherds after my own heart so that that which we receive in here, we can exercise it through faith. So I think also it's kind of like um, the blind leading the blind. If, they're, if you're getting the wrong information or whoever it might be. Now remember that the faith, the trust, or the trust we exercise comes from what we've been taught. Mm-hmm. So if you have, if you have been, uh, if you have been a religious, uh, in a religious organization which teaches, for example, that, that wives will spend eternity in full submission to their husband, well, that's what you've learned, right? If you have learned, for example, that there are 72 virgins that are waiting for you in heaven, that's what you've learned. If you have learned that you need four secret handshakes to go to heaven, that's what you've learned. So there's a lot of people that are going to different religious organizations. They've been there for years and for life. And this is what they believe in. And some of these things, you know, they really believe on these things. And they're exercising faith on behalf of what they have learned. Are you following me? Yeah. So... Those would be, I think, those would be areas of faith and trust that are being exercised in vain. I think that's what the Torah teaches us. We need the right teaching. We are warned that there will be false teachers and false prophets. They're teaching Torah, teaching the gospel, perhaps like the Pharisees, Sadducees. And so for the Jewish people, what faith, what is faith and trust? Because if we're going to exercise faith, we need to understand that. Faith and trust. The Jewish people exercise faith from what they learn from their rabbis. Now that sounds logical. Just as much as Christians do from learning from their pastor. In Hebrew, the words... Um, Imunas or imunam hak amim hak amim imunah hak amim those words right there is about trusting in the wisdom of the person that's teaching you trusting in the wisdom of the writers of Torah for example those that got inspired yes that's good right there but Imunaz Hag Amin is trusting also in the sages, the rabbis, the pastors, those that are teaching you. The question is, how does one know that his or her idea or even philosophy is valid and it is in line with God's Torah? Because you're just hearing, right? And you're, you're intaking. You're, here you're taking that, all of that stuff in there. How do you know it's valid? Mm -hmm. you're, you're almost totally dependent on the person that's in front of you. And he's teaching you, he's saying things, you know. But indeed, how do you know that his or her ideas are valid? 
And I think first we need to understand when rabbis teach, they usually always take under consideration two categories in which the Jew makes decisions from those two categories. So the rabbi almost instinctively before he teaches or opens his mouth, he's already taken into consideration those two categories I'm going to share with you. Number one, the daily Hebraic and biblical life. That's what the pastor should always take into consideration. The rabbis do. And he does not leave his house without acknowledging that God is with them every moment of the day. This is why we have the mezuzah, right? Yeah. On the door. For the, the average religious Jewish person takes under consideration that fact. They don't just run out the door in a hurry, you know, chewing on that last piece of sandwich, you know, trying to get, you know, into that freeway. No, the, the Jews already taken into consideration that. And the rabbi also instinctively already knows that for an observant Jew, he's already thinking about God when he goes out and when he comes in. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so the mezuzah is a reminder uh, to them of that, plus the practice of saying the, the Shema, Shema Israel, Hashem Eloheinu, Hashem Echa, Hero Israel, the Lord thy God, the Lord is one. So this, that's the first. And the second category is about secular life. But within the first category, the Hebraic life, there are three beliefs. And the first one I just that I mentioned one is the Hebraic law, the, the, the halacha, that's the Hebraic law. The Torah is known also as the law of God, or the law of who? Moses. So now he's got to take under consideration that these, his people, from generation to generation, they have known and they have been studying the law. The law of Moses, the law of God. Mm-hmm. It's a habit. It's a way of life. In Christianity, it's almost like from Sunday to Sunday. Now let's open it up, you know. No, it's a daily thing. And even in the New Covenant, the Rit Hadashah, what does it say? It says daily in the temple. Daily in every home. They cease not to what? Teach Torah. So that, this is the way of life for those that are spiritually observant of God's word. So the word Torah or law is the word or the Hebrew word for teaching and also direction for life. And this term is mostly used for the wonderful uh, laws, wonderful laws of God. <laughs> if every Christian could consider that the laws of God are wonderful, we won't say... He came away to do, to do away with that. How can he do away with something that is so wonderful? Hmm. So again, let me say that. That Hebrew word for teaching, Torah, law, is for teaching. It's wonderful laws, the principles, wonderful principles, wonderful precepts, which Yahweh God has given his people for their benefit it's for their benefit and for spiritual well-being, not as many would, would say to keep them in bondage. <laughs> the law is not to keep them in bondage. Benefits. Perks. That's the first thing. Second one, I mentioned there's three beliefs. The second belief is to adhere or to Jewish or Hebraic belief. For example, the Hashkafa, the Hashkafa, they, that they are a peculiar people. They believe that they are a peculiar people. And not until you and I can get to that point, it says, we are so special before God. We're just not average like the average person in this earth. We are his people, sons and daughters of God. This must be a belief, strong belief in us. Yes, hallelujah. hallelujah. Mm -hmm. To be also a belief that, to, that they are a light 
unto the world, chosen to give the world the Torah and a belief in the coming of Moshiach, the Messiah. These are beliefs. That's second. The third one, ABC, okay? They have been, they've been taught, like I have also been taught, that we cannot just pray and suddenly God gives us anything that we want. He gives us all the understanding that we need if we pray. I don't have time to study, so I'm going to pray, and God, you just open every chamber in me and pour it in there. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. Uh, so it's important, this number three to see is that they've been taught, and I've been taught this way my entire life, especially when I was young. I cannot just pray, and suddenly God gives me all the understanding that I need about life and godliness, but that we are to study to show ourselves approved of God. Someone say amen to that? And that requires seriousness on our part so that we may discover God's methods. Methods of analysis uh, crucial for arriving, arriving at true Torah thought. Yes, indeed. So, and this we have been taught can be done through four levels. Four levels of learning. Four levels of teaching. We learn, and they teach four levels of learning. The first one is called Pesach. Pishat, which is the surface level, surface level of learning. It's kind of like straight learning. You know, you can, you can say, I'm going to read the Bible from cover to cover. And well, that's kind of like straight, straight learning, right? Yeah. You, you're only going to get so much if that's what you're interested in doing. Jewish people are not taught to sit down and read it from cover to cover and then be able to brag about it. I've read from cover to cover ten times. <laughs> well, that was straight teaching, straight learning, you know. The surface learning or the literal direct meaning. You just got the direct meaning of it. All right? Mm -hmm. That's Peshat. Then the second level is the Ramez. Ramez is the level of, of hints or the deep, uh, a little bit deeper, allegoric, hidden, or symbolic. So it's something that is hidden, that begins to get revealed, or something that can also be symbolic, meaning something that's beyond just that surface, that, that literal sense. So Ramiz can also be a parable, like Yeshua uses used parables. He was using the second level oftentimes. He wouldn't give uh, uh, all of the pearls away, you know. So he would give a little teaching. He'd give, and then, uh, you know, those that were already in Torah would be able to understand. But there's a lot of people that would come. And uh, they, they, they wanted to attain the, the deeper secrets. Mm-hmm. So this Ramez level is the level that's beyond just the literal sense. Ramez can also be a parable, as I said. It takes the third level, the third level of learning, which is Darash, Darash, Hebrew, from Hebrew Darash. And uh, it also will take the sword. That's the final level. When you examine the scripture in the, for example, in the first one, uh, Pashat, you begin to understand the extended meaning of a text. You begin to, you begin to understand it. If you allow yourself to, to dwell in that scripture a little bit longer, and you allow the Holy Spirit to teach you, then you begin to get a little bit extended even in the very first level. So I want to emphasize again at the first level, the first level, the shot, you only begin to understand a little, a little bit, little meaning of the text. But if you continue to pursue it, to understand more, then the Holy Spirit will help you at the next level. But if you just skim through it, you don't give the Holy Spirit an opportunity. Because remember, what is the work of the Holy Spirit? It's to be our what? Our teacher or our helper. He helps us. He's both our teacher and our helper. He teaches how to 
study. If we, he'll, if we pause enough, he will bring to mind those things that what? We have already learned. He's not going to bring something that you have not learned. This is the work of the Holy Spirit. He's a good teacher. So the Holy Spirit is our, is our helper in learning, and it is God who will approve of your studying. Study to show yourselves approved of God. It's God the only one that will actually approve to you. So each, of, each level of meaning never contradicts the base meaning. So you start with the base and you continue to get deeper and the second level will not contradict the first level. Although you're getting more understanding, deeper understanding. It's not like you're going to do something brand new. It carries on through the fourth level. Mm -hmm. Peshat. Okay. Now, let me just go over this a little bit more. Peshat of the Torah text is akin to entering, for example, through the city gates of Jerusalem. Do, uh, when you arrive at the ancient city and you're outside of the gate, are you inside? No, because you're the outside. So the first level is like you have arrived at the gate. That's the gate level. You still haven't gone in and explored. You got to go on the inside. All right? So, as soon as you go on the inside, you pick up the cell phone and you go away. And it says, where am I? I'm inside. Where are you inside? I'm just inside the gate. Oh, you don't know very much yet. You got it? Because you're only at the gates. And this is where most Christians stay, is that they never go deeper than the gates. And when problems and troubles and all kinds of stuff comes around, they don't know how to deal it because uh, they haven't gone inside to explore it a little further. It's like the onion has the outside what? And what is that outside brown layer called? The shell, right? Yeah. So you're just at the shell. <laughs> you don't want to stay at the shell. You've got to go inside where the meat is. So that first level of learning is the simplest meaning based on the text and context. But then you go to remez, and that is where you begin to get a hint. A hint meaning the deeper meaning of that first level beyond the literal hidden sense. So you read something in the Bible and you say, oh, that makes sense. <laughs> you just read one word, it says, oh, that makes sense. Well, that's the first level, if it makes sense. But a lot of people say, that makes sense, and they'll just walk away. Yeah. Is that, is, is that what you want? You just wanted the aroma? You, hmm, loves bakery. Mm, that was good, you know. <laughs> that's the sense. <laughs> How much are you going to spend on that? Just the aroma. You're not going to get very much out of that. Only the scent. You're just at the gates. Mm -hmm. So then there is darash. Includes, it includes the explanation of the word or scripture. So it includes again what the explanation, but this requires now searching, research requires search, and you are then this is the point where you begin to because you're now at the third level, you begin to seriously inquire. This is the level where the scriptures say, Seek and it shall be given. Mm -hmm. It's not talking about you know, seeking for things that we want. It's talking about seeking God's Torah, seeking His truth. Seek and <clears throat> you shall receive. That word seek means, uh, uh, it means to investigate. Seek or investigate and you shall find. 
Okay, so we investigated the third level, and you shall find, and this is the non-literal homiletic interpretation of Torah. It is about moral meanings of what the text says. Now, now you're getting some moral understanding. It's not just, I got the sense. You're getting something of real value. The level of, an, of, under, of understanding is based on a detailed logical analysis because you are investigating. So the word darash means investigation. Darash means investigation. Implying what? A level of understanding that you have arrived at only after you have what? Investigated. You see? You cannot arrive at the level you want to arrive unless you have personally investigated. <clears throat> so it won't do you any good to sit down or, or, or go down in your knees and tell the Holy Spirit to do some investigation for you. <laughs> no, you do the investigation. You seek. And when you investigate, you guarantee to what? Find the answer. The answer's on its way only when you investigate. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you have to investigate for yourself beyond the black and white letters that you are looking at and words that you are seeing or, or saying. This is an, um, a level of understanding that, <clears throat> that will actually bring you to, the, to that other level of of understanding the mysteries, the secrets. They're not yet there because you're, you're still in the level of what? Investigation. Mm -hmm. Study, investigate, show yourself approved of God, being able to what? Rightly divide. So in a homicide, what do they do? In the investigator, they, they rightly divide every detail. And they send, uh, if they need to, the coroner. And the coroner takes uh, uh, things and, you know, apart until they get down to how this person died. My brother was a coroner, and he invited me one day, he says, you like to be a coroner? <laughs> <laughs> and he showed me how to do it. He, he actually did. He, he got the saw and, and, and sawed the guy's head and opened it up. And then he opened up the chest and he said, see this? I'll tell you exactly where this guy died from. And he showed me exactly how he died. But I had to wear a mask. <sighs> I tell you, investigate. Darash. It means to investigate. Say, I need to investigate. And then you have sword representing the, the hidden meaning of that which you have been investigating, that which was hiding. The cause, reason for why that person died now is revealed. Mm -hmm. And after you have seriously inquired and properly investigated the word or scripture, that's when you enter into that sword fourth level where the secrets of mysteries are revealed. Mm -hmm. Now, for whom, for who are those secrets or mysteries, for whom are they for? Does someone know what I'm going to say? Who? Who qualifies for that? For whom? Who is intended to benefit from, from these secrets and ministries? I think uh, only a small number of people. Small number of people who want to understand the deep truths of God. It's only a small number of people that will literally study to show themselves the proof of God. This is why number four is not for everyone. Although it can be for everyone. In other words, everyone can graduate. It's up to you. This is why when a boy is born in Israel, the observant Jewish mother says, here's another rabbi. 
What, what does she mean? It means that here's another investigator. <laughs> yeah. Here's, the, here's the, the next one that's going to benefit, benefit from and understand what others do not understand because they don't study to show themselves approved of God. And so sod for the average person remains obscure, obscure secrets, obscure mysteries, while the other ones are just moving ahead with God, understanding everything's going on, and nothing, you know, bothers them hardly ever. Everything's going their way. So this is the level of true revelation. So if you're not at this level, guess what you're going to do? You're going to seek out who? What? Prophets. And you're going to go and say, you got a word for me? And you come to me and say, you, you better get to the fourth level. You know, I don't give people prophecies because if I just start giving prophecies just like that, I mean, I, I can give you a prophecy and the prophecy is going to be, Thus saith the Lord! <laughs> Hallelujah! You don't want to hear that. <laughs> you want to have something that will tickle your ear. You want the shortcut. Get right down to the, the mysteries. You want to get you want to get those mysteries and those secrets without work. Hmm. My, my, my. So only I think the privileged or the privileged or the, those that really study become the privileged ones to receive those mysteries and secrets of God, to understand them, although everyone can understand them because everyone can study deeply the Word of God. So herein is where I think the problem lies. When teaching scriptures and why the Holy Scripture says, I will give you shepherds after my own heart. You see, many times, although well-intended individuals present Torah interpretations that are not based on anything more than their subjective views. Only what they know. So what is going to happen is if they're going to teach only what they know, only what they know, they're going to cite a scripture, right? A verse. But then they suggest a, a lesson that is not derived from the verse. Why? Again, because why did I say? They have a, a subjective view. A view that is not um, based deep enough in God's word to give you what you really need. It is like a novice doctor has a subjective view of your problem and is going to give you a, a prognosis uh, uh, of, of your problem, but he's not really deep enough to give you any deeper analysis, so you have to go to a second, uh, what, opinion. And if you spend four hours with a doctor uh, that really knows, then, then the doctor will take time to go through everything and eliminate the, the error and the mistakes that everyone else told you why you have that problem. Is that making sense? Yeah. So we go to our friends and we think they're doctors and say, what do you think I have? <laughs> Wow. Uh -huh. hmm? But I want you to notice something. This problem is really serious. It is severe for Yahweh, our living God, carefully selected. I think, and I know, he selected every, each and every single word that you read in that book we call the Holy Scriptures. He selected every letter. He selected every single word in all verses. If we simply offer an explanation without analysis of what's really deep down inside of those, we just skip through the surface. We then fail to uncover God's intended lesson. Okay? So we are merely using a verse as a springboard for what? For our own thoughts. 
But this is not Torah studying. This will not impress people when you're teaching them. So, and Torah is all about impressing others, not, not impressing them in a human emotional way, but impressing others with a deep appreciation, not of man's wisdom, but of God's great wisdom. That is what true teaching is all about. That you might be impressed, not in what I am or who or what I'm saying, but impressed of God's wisdom. That's why you should be here. And that's why you should be at any, at any place hearing God's word because you want to hear his heart and his wisdom. Especially in such a time as we're living today. But if we are still in the first level, I tell you, we are still scattered with so many other thinkings that are still governing us. And that's where we pick up all the Hmm. The viruses. Because we're touching too many hands out there. We're touching too many philosophies out there. We're touching too many teachings out there. And pretty soon they begin to affect us in our spirit. And when they affect us in our spirit, we become physically sick. Because we've got the wrong input. Are you listening here? And we have the wrong input. You are literally going to be sick. And it's going to affect your spleen first. And when it affects your spleen. It begins to affect your entire physical constitution. So you are going to miss out on a lot of services. A lot of powerful important sessions with God. But you're going to justify them legally because you're sick. Are you, are you got that, you know? But how did you get sick? Because the mindset was not biblical, Hebraic mindset. It was the mindset of the teachings that you got out there that has you doing this and saying that, and you're contaminated, and you're contaminating, contaminating everyone else with the same virus or flu. And it comes right out of your mouth. Right? So in some places, some countries, they're wearing masks all the time. <laughs> they don't want to breathe it in. Or they're sick, they don't want to breathe it out. Hmm. And so if you have an appreciation for Yahweh's word, I say, how many have an appreciation for his word? Because what we want to do is to have an appreciation of, of his great wisdom and appreciation of God's word proceeding from his mouth. So if you do have that appreciation, please turn to someone and say to them, it's time to say wow. <laughs> Because when you appreciate something a, a whole lot, you're going to say, wow. Mm -hmm. So we're not hearing enough believers say, wow, because they don't have any wows going. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, so the Torah teaches us or teach teaches in a very, I think, one subtle kind of slips it right there in a deep kind of a manner, and it takes time for this to develop in us. It's, uh, it's like a lifestyle that you need to develop slowly so that it could be a deep thing with you, but it can afford us great, beautiful insights. He said, I will teach you of my ways, the deep insight of how his ways are to be in our lives so that we may walk in his path. So we must study the verses, allowing the words to lead us and not use them to support our own whims. 
Yeah. We study them. Mm -hmm. And we allow them to what? Those words to lead us. His word will lead you. Hallelujah. So Psalms 37 verse 5 says, <clears throat> it speaks about trust. Betahon, trust. Commit your way to Yahweh, to the Lord. Trust in him and he will, that means he will do it. See? You should submit yourself to God's Torah. Trust in him. That's betahon. Mm -hmm. And he shall do it. He shall bring it to pass. So now, you're in the fourth level. You are secure. An insecure person finds it difficult to put their trust in God. That is why I strongly believe that when a person devotes his or her time to the service of God, of Yahweh, a person has real security. Devote yourself to, to his service and you'll find yourself being more and more secure. This is the only security there is. And this security is based on trust. Betachon, trust. What did the psalmist say? Commit your ways to the Lord. Trust in Him and He will do it. Wow, that's amazing, huh? He will do it. So if we, if we live according to His plan, then we have no need to find security in something else. Anything else, security. No, no, no. I found it already. The Jewish people, this, for the Jewish people, this is the purpose for their existence. As far as they're concerned, they exist for the precise purpose of trusting in God, both as a Jewish nation and individually. What, did, what does it say there? Commit your ways to God. So the Jewish people say, this is my purpose for being alive. Wow. I'm alive so that I'm supposed to trust in Him. That's why I'm alive, and that's why he brings it to pass. And so this is very important. Gentiles who have come to, to Yahweh's Torah also come to know that this is the purpose of their existence. Which gives them a tremendous, I think, security that they're not going to find. You're not going to find it out there in the world at all. Why? Because this is the only reason we were created. To trust in God with all of our hearts, all of our soul, all of our strength. Mm -hmm. So it is only God who provides us with our intelligence. Hello? <laughs> and he'll, he'll do it. Commit yourself to him, trust in him, and he will do it. He will, he will do what? He, he is going to give Things, put things into your life. Mm. Intelligence, he'll give you knowledge, talents, and abilities all locked inside of you. God says, stir the, the gifts that are where? They're inside of you. How did they get there? He put them there in your DNA when you were born. He infused you with all of these wonderful giftings. They're already there for you to stir them, but they cannot be stirred when you're in the first level. So they're trapped there for your entire life. Let's hurry up to the second, the third, the fourth level. <clears throat> Again, it is only God who provides you with all of these things and it is he who allows us to enjoy our good fortune and everything that acquire we have acquired and achieved in this world even when it seems that we, we have no protection still he will provide that too so we the people who know God know him as God have a specific mission in life And this mission completely revolves around serving the creator of the universe. Blessed be he. And being an example of righteousness and goodness. That is our responsibility. 
be an example of righteousness and goodness to others. We, of course, know that we live in a world that's filled with fear, unkindness, and terror. By definition, our mission of trusting in God, listen, with all of our heart, provides us with all of the security we need, even in the midst of all of that that's going on. We trust in him. I know he's going to make a way. Though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil. He's going to make a way. He'll make a path where there's no path. If he needs to make a river where there's no river, so boom, put a river there for me. Glory be him. Hallelujah. So we must try, I think, to stay steadfast in our faith and trust and believe that God knows everything. If he says, commit your ways and trust in him and he will do it, that means he knows everything. And after all, he created us and we are his people. We are his creation. We are his children. We are saved by his grace and has given us a covenant that is eternal. Aren't you glad? Eternal salvation. So what is... Um, then therefore, I mentioned that we must, we're called to be, our mission is to serve the Creator. What is service to the Creator? What is service to God? Well, first of all, we, we should learn to be good. Be a good person. Do people know you as a good person? I don't mean because you gave them a quote or something. I, are you good? Good. Be good by doing good. Be good by doing good. That's one thing. We direct our energies in fulfilling the commandments also as often and as much as we can. When God says to do something, we need to do it. Doing unto others as they would have them to do unto us. This is service and also this is doing good. Do unto others as you would have them to do unto us. Mm -hmm. Is that a good thing? Yeah. So are you going to talk bad about your brother? No, because they'll talk bad about you. <laughs> That's why we only, we're only called to do good. This is what gives us true fulfillment. True fulfillment is not just hanging around together and just worshiping God together. No, no. We got to do good to each other. This is our calling. Our true fulfillment in our lives. And this is what God wants of us. And so, my dear friends, tonight, Yahweh wants to say to us, don't be fooled by what the rest of society calls good. Mm -hmm. uh, what... What do you mean? Which is finding ways to seek never-ending pleasure and fantasy. That's the way they find good, huh? Let's go out and have fun. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the way of the world, right? And this has nothing to do of, with how Torah defines the good. All right? The only good that matters is the good that God wants you to do. Mm -hmm. So when deciding on an activity, for example, we all must decide today, say, make a decision. What we're going to do, we're deciding on an activity. A person only has to ask, will this activity, will this find favor with God? What I'm about to do. Is it going to find favor with God in God's eyes? Or you can think, WWYD, what would that mean? What would Yah Yahweh do? Uh huh. What would Yahweh do? I'm going to, I want to do this. Would He, would He bless me for doing this? Mm -hmm. So sometimes we, uh, we plan activities because we're lonely. Hello? Huh. Yeah, lonely. I, I'm so lonely I can cry, the song says. <laughs> I, I feel left out, rejected. I'm, I, I mean, I'm out of the loop, it seems like, almost all the time. And yet King David said, seek and find your greatest sense of comfort with God. <laughs> seek and shall find. Desire 
and take delight only in the pleasures of which you need not be ashamed of in God's presence. Mm -hmm. So in fact, these pleasures should give you joy because why? Because you know that you may enjoy them in his presence. So choose the things that you will enjoy in his presence. So as I begin to close here, I want, I want to say this. Even amidst joys and pleasures, you remain, you remain with your God. All the fun you're going to have, he, he says, I want to be part of that. He says, I want to be in all and through all. No, God, you, you can't be part of this. Why? What's going to go on? You know? And a lot of people, they don't want God there. Mm-hmm. So whatever we do, let, let's be sure that God says it's okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. I think it was Dwight Moody, if you know a little bit about his life, God used him way back in the 1800s, you know. He was invited to this dance. It was a big ball. And God says, you go ahead and go because everyone's going to get saved there. So he went, and the girl that invited him says, okay, let's go in the middle of the floor and dance. So he went in the middle of the floor. He says, I never do anything without prayer. <laughs> <laughs> so he went down on his knees and prayed. In 10 minutes, everyone was weeping before God. And you see that, you know? Because God has to be in all and through all. Mm -hmm. So next time you're invited to something, Really know if God will be pleased that you're there. Or are you there for self, self-gratification, to be seen? You leave him out of the equation. It's because you never entered into the fourth level. And you don't understand the deep mysteries and the secrets of God. And so you're just floating in the surface, scattered all over the place. Mm -hmm. that has to end say that it's going to end now <laughs> okay so do not be concerned with whether others appreciate your aspiration to serve God or not even whether they encourage you to or not to don't be concerned about that why? because you have learned remember this is a process and through the process of learning, you've also learned to slow down. Be still, right? And know I am God. Rest on earth, in other words. When you're still, you're resting on this earth. You're resting where you are. This means we should seek and secure for ourselves a quiet, undisturbing life or place in your life. And live side by side, as it were, with your neighbors in peace. Can you do that? Yes, yes, you can. So if you do this, you will always, or while everything around you may be constantly changing and in an uproar and tribulations, you are in good cheer. Isn't that amazing? In this world, you, you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. Why, you have a stable dwelling for yourself. Mm-hmm. Okay, so now you have a stable place and you like it so much and you like the quietness of all, all of that, but I also say don't be so observed with your place. Yeah, we can reach a place where we're quiet and we're quiet, we're, we, we're kind of too absorbed with it that you forget your purpose in life which is to do good. You can't do good just staying in the same place all the time. I like it here because it's quiet. <laughs> I want to close with this thought. Pray for God to open the door. Pray. Say, oh God, please open the door where I can nourish others with the faith and the word that you've given to me. And then you should also pray about it yourself. So, 
So I, I would say, you know, well, I can't come to Torah class because I have to work. Then you also need to pray for God to open the door where you can be nourished and your faith can grow. Pray to God. He'll make a, a path where there is what? No path. There's no way this is going to happen. Why? Because the door is closed for me. Wow. This is why you need that fourth level. Because you need the secret as to how that door is going to open. It's a mystery. I don't know how he's going to do it. He's got the answer already. It doesn't matter whether your neighbor is set in his ways. Or whether your child, your son, your daughter, husband, wife is set in their ways. That is not what's important. What's important is that you are going from glory to glory to glory. This is what is really counting. And this is what's going to dry up that other well. And this is where God's going to open it so that if you have to work on Shabbat or whatever you have to do on, on Torah study day during this time, that is the moment because he's hearing your prayer where God can open it up for you. So you need to stop saying or thinking, I can't come because of this, and I can't come because of that. You keep saying that, you'll never get the door of the mysteries open to you. Hello? Yeah. You know, we say, I can do all things, but not that. <laughs> <laughs> wow, what contradiction. <laughs> if you can do all things, then believe that he's going to open that door. Because you can get, very. remember what I mentioned, you can be absorbed in that place. That quiet place. That quiet place is the place you don't hear God's Torah the way he wants you to hear it. You just got the music on, the wrong kind of music. It may seem soothing. It's, it may seem right. It may seem you're getting something out of it. But it's not the place that God had intended for you. Because you are to teach Torah. And if they begin to hear you teach Torah, I tell you, everything's going to change then. Mm-hmm. So we are vulnerable and easy prey to the instability of this life. And those that would rule us, and those that remember uh, what I said earlier, the teaching. Wives, you're going to be submitted to me in heaven for eternity. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, you're going to take that teaching? Well, in a sense, we're taking similar teachings. Because we have surrendered to the status quo. We have surrendered to that circumstances and that moment where that moment of our lives, we can't get out of there. We're like stuck. Mm. So we're vulnerable and pray to the instability of this life and yet each day we should think about the greatness of God yeah God is great is this not just a song that I'm going to sing for the moment God is great that I'm thinking about the greatness of God and the true purpose of our lives as God planned for us not as man planned for us. Right. Otherwise, there would never be the virtuous woman. Hello there? Because she's got to do everything the, the, the husband is saying. But she could do now this, she could do that, she could do everything, and she could be part of God's Torah, and she could raise her children, and she could be an influence in the community. She could be dynamic in the commerce world. And she was. And every man as well can. So try to live each day 
as if it was your last day, then what would you do? <laughs> you say, wait a minute, it's like, th this is going to end right away. We need to shift everything. Let's change it according to his way now. Oh, too little, too late, <laughs> almost, right? Because you realize it's coming to an end here. But you have been secretly praying, secretly wanting to see this amazing change take place in your community and in your children and in your spouse and whatever it is. You've been praying secretly, but you never ventured out of that place to trust God for the greatness of, of who he is. I don't know, you know, maybe we won't. What would happen if we won't live past today? <laughs> this is it. The heavens opens and the Mashiach comes. That's it, right? Only what we have done would have lasted. I think that God has provided us with how to fulfill our purpose. And I think, one, by making a greater effort to be involved, first, in prayer with greater concentration, in Torah study, fulfilling the mitzvahs of God, especially the tzedakah, that is being the charitable, being charitable to others, and trying harder to improve our character flaws, which is all part of how we nourish faith. Work at your character flaws. And this is what gives us strength and courage to be, to be involved in God's will. Everyone please say amen. So this has been our teaching for tonight. God wants you to trust him with all of your heart, soul, and strength. And have nothing before him. And everyone say amen. Would you stand with me?